Good evening, welcome to my laboratory. Okay, uh, this is kind of a complex demonstration. I hope that I can pull it off. Um, charge, motion, field. It's all one thing. One thing. One. I'll say that again. Charge, motion, field. It's all one thing. One thing. One. Okay, so here what I have is uh, the uh, TK Slayer, the mini Slayer Exciter. And over here I have the Micro Queeg. And then back in the back there I have the D input voltage and current and the 12 volt battery that I've been using. Okay. And here I have uh, this enamel wire core is actually a, t a true Tesla bifiler wound core I coil. I even use different colors of enameled wire so you can see how the two strands alternate. They come together, there's the crossover part and then there are the two ends of the bifolar winding. And you can see that I've made a little tune circuit out of it with a capacitor and I've put an LED on there as a load. This green winding is something else. It's not, not doing anything. Except when I short it, of course, it stops the effect. But uh, that's, so that's a little tuned circuit there with an LED. Uh, this, you're familiar with, this is the Electrus Mug Harvester. This is another tuned circuit with three LEDs in series. And, um, Let's see, that over there is uh, the Conrad Electro Low Voltage Jewel Thief. It's now running on a power supply um, uh, with, uh, at about a quarter of a volt. It uses a 2SK170 field effect transistor. Isn't that a cute little toroid? I wound that toroid a hundred turns of it that fine magnet wire there using my toroid winder. Okay, anyway, um, and this here, oops, sorry, uh, this thing right here is a little electrostatic field detector. It uses a 2SK170, an LED, and a resistor. The resistor is connected to the gate. This is like a, what is that, a 10K or, you know, connected to the gate of the field effect transistor. And then the other two legs, doesn't even matter the polarity, the other two legs are simply switching this LED. And then here's a little uh, three volt button cell battery in a holder. Excuse me. That's what I get for having beer for breakfast. Okay, so uh, this thing is a very sensitive electric field detector, and uh, you can see it's turned on now. I'm actually trying to turn it off. It doesn't want to turn off. Okay, so at any uh, there we go. We got it to turn off finally. Okay, and this is a piece. Oops, this is a piece of plastic, and. The plastic is charged by rubbing it against a cloth, and I guess you can see that this thing detects the charged piece of plastic moving from a long distance away. I can't get it all in the camera screen, but it will do this from a meter away. I'm rubbing this thing against my blue jeans right now, and that's the wrong polarity charge. So we'll sensitize it to the correct polarity charge and now you can see <laughs> that it works backwards okay so so this 2SK170 field effect transistor works by responding to the ambient electric field in the environment or through the circuitry okay all right got that so we have basically three different or four different kinds oh one more let's see where is it oh here 
This is just a neon, any two neon, on a stick. And this is elect this is a bamboo stick, so it's like a high, high, very high, high resistance conductor. Probably about 10 mega ohms per inch, something like that, or maybe even greater. Uh, but anyway, that's neon. Okay. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to power up the Slayer exciter, and we'll see how these different devices respond to the Slayer exciter. Okay. So there's the Slayer on, and there's my little neon pilot light for the Slayer. First thing I want you to notice is that both electrodes, if you can see it, both electrodes in that neon are glowing. And if I bring the other neon up against it, both electrodes glow, which means that we have an alternating RF situation happening here. Alternating current, alternating polarity, RF coming off of that. Slayer, TK Slayer, Mini Slayer, Exciter. Okay, now the tuned loop stick circuit does not respond. Okay, the little random jewel thief circuit, unplugged from its power supply but touched with a finger. Can you see that? Am I shining at the camera? It responds brilliantly if I touch it with a finger. It responds brilliantly even if I don't touch it with a finger if it's close enough to this Slayer exciter field. Okay, and of course the this guy goes like crazy in response to the electric field of that Slayer exciter. Okay. And this little tune circuit does not. There's no no attempt even to light the LED with that little tune circuit. Alright, stand by now. Okay, now I've switched the power supply over to um, to the micro quig and uh, you can see already that the little tune circuit here is working like crazy. Uh, even this tuned circuit over here, that far away, is working great, right? And uh, of course we know that it does wild stuff to this, don't we? Yeah. Um, does it respond to the random jewel thief? No, there's no, not even a hint of lighting up to this jewel thief. Does it respond to the electric field detector? Not a bit of change in that light. Let's get it to the other polarity if we can. There, not a bit of change in that light. I can do it with my fingers though and get it back on. Okay. And uh, let's see what's left. Oh, yeah, the bare neon. The bare neon. Nothing. And I can even touch various portions of the circuit with the bare neon, and uh, nothing happens. Okay. So what have you just seen here? You've seen the difference between an electric field radiator and a magnetic field radiator. And you've seen how two different types of detectors, or three or four different types of detectors, tuned circuits or LED, or uh, I'm sorry, neons or bare neons respond or don't respond to those two sources of field, right? Charge, motion, field. It's all one thing. One thing. One. Thank you for watching.